My background in art didn't start, you know, in a formal sense when I was young, when I was in high school. I did not go to college directly out of high school. I'm a Montgomery College product, the Tacoma Park campus, our oldest art program. And uh, I graduated from MC and transferred to AU. I started out in school studying ceramics and was drawn to ceramics for a couple of reasons. I, one, I thought it was somehow pragmatic. I realize now that was totally not true. <laughs> My own development of a as, as a painter started uh, actually in high school and before high school, taking like Saturday morning classes at the Corcoran. My master's degree actually is in weaving. Um, that was a number of years ago. And after graduate school, I started um, doing the photography. I worked a lot of different professions from uh, things like carpentry, roofing. I worked in the uh, restaurants, catering and kitchens. I was a chef. So I had experience in creative endeavors and working with my hands, but in, I didn't think of myself formally as an artist. Uh, and I actually came back to community college, and I'm an alumni of Montgomery College. I majored in um, graphic design at Tacoma, but when I switched to AU, I went into the fine arts and I, was, I had a design major, just design and painting. And uh, <clears throat> that led me, I, I kept up with the graphic design. In fact, I earned my living working part-time as a graphic designer, so I had that in my background. Of course, when I got to making ceramics, I realized it didn't say everything I wanted to say. I had all these other ideas. And so I, even before I got out of school, was primarily making sculpture <laughs> out of ceramics. Uh, even though I continue to throw and you know, make functional dishes on the side, that's not my primary focus. And then ending up uh, with my uh, MFA from George Washington University. But in undergraduate school, I was also a double major as an English major. And I find that that, that that combination works very, very well. The sort of interdisciplinary nature of my own education uh, feeds into the art because I find the arts primarily are interdis interdisciplinary. Starting with darkroom photography primarily, which um, gave me a really strong background in some of the technical issues, um, exposure and you know working in the darkroom, printing and um, you know just refining images. And craftsmanship is really important to me. Um, in all the work that I do. After my basic training in sculpture, I took a class in casting, and metal casting. And this uh, whole area of process of metal casting, both the material and how, how it's done, really got me, I got interested in. And so I've pursued that. My, my personal uh, niche within sculpture is in casting specifically. I went into the MFA program at GW. At that time they had a master's in traditional printmaking, etching, lithography, woodblock. And so I got my master's and I put myself through school though as working as a graphic designer. So I literally have seen both sides of that picture. I went to graduate school and I also studied sculpture and sort of really pushed mixed media sculpture, looking at, um, thinking about the idea that what you make doesn't have to be limited by one technique that you've learned. That there might be things you have to say that you need to, to learn another technique. Right now I'm, I've taken up knitting because I really want to do some pieces that involve uh, knit things. So I'm not, I, I don't let myself be limited by what my current skills are. I go out and look for the skills I need to do what I want to say. Before I taught here, I worked at the Phillips Collection for years, the uh, museum in Washington, which I felt like, you know, really was a kind of graduate school for me in the sense of exposing me to a wide variety of some of the finest art of the 20th century, which I got to see on a daily basis. I was actually a student here in the 70s, and design was stressed when I was a student, so I feel like I got a really solid background in both two- and three-dimensional design. Um, I retain a lot of what I learned from that time and continue to pass it along to my students. It's you know, kind of a legacy, I think, that um, I do take these issues very seriously in my artwork and in my teaching. The Visual Arts Department has, uh, Tacoma Park Campus has been around for a long, long time, decades as a matter of fact, and used to be located in a much smaller building across the street from here, and this is our second year in this extraordinary facility where we have 
you know, just state-of-the-art uh, equipment to use. Here at the Morris and Gwendolyn K. Fritz Foundation Arts Center, we have a lot of wonderful new facilities, uh, excellent for the faculty to teach in, uh, phenomenal for the community at large, our students, the entire uh, campus community to come in and see art and enjoy all kinds of different exhibits. My printmaking room I think is like 1,800 square feet, it's huge and I got more presses. I have regular traditional litho presses and I have an electric press. And the same thing with etching. I have a brand new press and I have electric press and manual presses. And we have a state-of-the-art ventilation system. We have great technical resources. And so in ceramics, we're able to offer students pretty much all the techniques. A big slab roller, a nice extruder, we've got three great kilns. Um, so we have a variety of kilns so we can do different kinds of firings. We can mix our own clay. We've got a great glaze lab. We now have a full wood shop so that we have just an incredible array of equipment, table saw, band saw, radial arm saw, what anybody could ask for for a wood shop. We have just in the last year brought online uh, a couple pieces of equipment so that the students are learning steel fabrication. So they're doing welding in both oxyacetylene gas welding and we are going to start them doing some electric welding with some MIG welders. We have a beautiful furnace, so the students are actually doing hot metal casting. We came from a very small building with very limited space and very limited equipment to this spectacular um, large space with new weaving looms, two new um, computer labs with state-of-the-art Mac computers, and it's very exciting and it actually allows us to do more with our students than we could ever do before and offer new classes as well. So there's quite a lot going on and quite a lot to, to learn from. I think it creates a tremendous community of where people learn from each other. Uh, I often tell my uh, students that my class is one of those places where you're encouraged to look over each other's shoulders. Montgomery College is so much a part of who I am that you, you just can't separate Mary Staley from Montgomery College. I am Montgomery College. <laughs>